Greetings! Today we're checking out the Renogy 200 Watt Shadow Flux Anti-Shading N-Type Solar Panel. They claim 65% output with 25% shading, but is it any good? Let's find out. Now for some specifications, it runs a 36.5 volt VOC even when shaded, a 6.9 amp short circuit current, it is 50 by 30 by 1.2 inches and weighs only 24 pounds, which is 7% smaller and 10% lighter than competitors. It rocks a 25% efficiency with what they call anti-hotspot technology. It's a 16 bus bar design, IP67 water resistant, which means it can be submerged and packs a five year manufacturer's warranty. Of course, we took it outside to do some testing. Let's see what the results were. Solar incidence today about 1120 watts per square meter. That's a little on the low side for my elevation, but pretty close to what most people would have around two or 3,000 feet. And we do have blue skies today, but there is some haze in the air because we have high winds, lots of dust. Okay, so this is a generic 200 watt solar panel. It's an old Bouge RV. They don't make these anymore. I cleaned it off so it's nice and clean. Let's see what kind of wattage we're getting. Okay, we're getting 170 watts even. That's actually not too bad. Okay, now we add the Shadow Flux 200. Same exact angle as the generic. Let's see what we get. Holy cow, we're getting 210, 211 watts out of the Shadow Flux. That's a massive improvement. That's actually more than rated power. Okay, so let's go ahead and shade about a quarter of the panel. Let's see what results we get now. Zero watts. So we get nothing out of that panel when it's 20% shaded. So that much shade on your panel, it's dead. Let's do the same now. Okay, there we have a 20% shade. Let's check that. Okay, we're now down to 130 watts. That's still pretty good. Seeing that we do have a good 20% of the panel shaded. Try shading it like that. 112. Okay, this is ridiculous. I'm gonna go ahead and do like a 50% shade. I don't expect this to work. Check that out, even with a 50% shade. 60 watts. So how this works, it says bypass diodes. So you can shade parts of the panel and other parts of the panel will continue to produce. Okay, no surprise that these solar panels are water resistant, meaning you can hose them off and get them wet. I mean, they're, they're meant to be outside. Of course, that's the case. But there is a difference between the two in the level of water resistance. Now this is gonna be very difficult for you to see because it's black on black text. I'll try to show you. Right there above my finger, Hopefully that will come in. It says IP65. Now IP65 doesn't mean you can submerge the panel, but the shadow flux, even though this is a very similar looking box and you're not really gonna be able to see this that well, but right above my finger, it says IP67. Now that means you can dunk this thing underwater. Uh, I don't like the look of this box. This box does not look like it can be dunked underwater, but it says IP67 and they claim this panel is IP67 water resistant, which means you can submerge it. So let's give it a shot. So yes, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna dunk it in water, but not my swimming pool because it's not open yet for the season. I'm gonna dunk it in this salt water hot tub. Yes, salt water. This is the worst thing you could ever do to anything that has electronics or electricity going through it. That's really gonna test this IP67 claim if it is truly water resistant. Now I'm not gonna dunk it for more than a few seconds, but that should be enough to ingress and short the panel out if it is not IP67. So here we go. Again, do not do this at home. This is Hobotech. I do crazy things for views. If this gets destroyed, I'm out nothing. They sent me this for free. I'm assuming it's gonna work. Oh boy, salt water. And I got a lot of salt in here, a lot of sea salt. I'm gonna try not to damage my hot tub in the process, but let me get this down in there. I'll get it down in most of the way. There we go, it's in the water. There you have it, it is electronic side down in salt water. Now let's take it out and see if it still works. There we go, salt water, oh boy. I don't feel good about this test at all, but. I'll do it, I'll take one for the team. Check it out, not only does it work, it's still outputting 210 watts. That is pretty awesome for a panel that was just dunked in a salt water hot tub. So what do I think about the Renogy Shadow Flux? I really like this panel. 
I wish they made it in a larger size, like a three or 400 watt, because a 200 watt is pretty much going to be only for people who are going to put them on an RV or going to be putting them in their car or something. They need like something that's a little more portable. Now, something like that would be perfect for camping. You can throw it in your car, your RV, your truck, whatever, and just throw it on the ground. Even laying flat, you're going to get great output. Now, the, the thing that impressed me the most is that it's a 200 watt panel, and I was getting 210 watts out of it. Getting a higher output than what is rated is pretty rare. So if you're looking for the most amount of power in the smallest package, the Renogy Shadow Flux is probably going to be the panel for you, especially if you're expecting a little bit of shading. Of course, if you shade more than 50% of the panel, the output drops to almost nothing. I mean, 60 watts. When they say partial shading, they mean 20, 25%. When you start shading it more than that, you're going to lose a lot of output. So... Just keep that in mind. I do need to make it very clear that when they say shading, they don't mean clouds. So overcast conditions is not going to make this panel run great. Very few solar panels run very good in overcast conditions. This shading they're talking about is when you actually cover certain sections of the panel and then the rest of the panel because of the bypass diodes will output power. This isn't gonna help you on cloudy days. Now, one thing I didn't really care for was the price. It's a little over a buck a watt with the discount code provided. So there is a discount code in the description. Make sure you use the link here at the bottom of the screen. You can get it for just over 200 bucks with that code. And that's of course for a limited time. That's definitely not the cheapest panel on the market, but you are getting a lot of technology. You're getting the most power in the smallest space. I have to constantly remind people that when you shrink technology down, it costs more. So if you have unlimited space and you can put five, 600 watt panels on your rig or on your house or whatever you're doing, that's great. Get them for 50 cents a watt. But if you really need this anti-shading technology and you need a panel that puts out more than its rated capacity in a small space like your RV roof, I would suggest taking a closer look at this panel. So if you're interested in the Renogy Shadow Flux, I'm going to have a link here at the bottom of the screen along with a QR code you can scan if you're watching me on TV. It'll take you on over to the Renogy store page where you can check out the Shadow Flux 200 watt panel. Thanks for watching and until next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. RV Golf Guy, Brian Blue, Bruce Johnson, Jason Soroka, Marcus T. Bison.